Hello, Alex here, and in this very much unplanned entry into my series on mastering Harman Phoenix 200, I want to set the record straight about the purple base colour now that I've personally experienced it and done a very brief unscientific test, so we can set the record straight about where it comes from, what it affects, and stop accusing labs of not knowing how to bleach fill. Let's get into it. So first things first, I am very unwell at the minute, so please bear with me. This is not a super scientific test and won't be an extremely long video because this is something that I just encountered by accident while doing work for the next video. So the negative footage and these scans will be blurred to censor that and not spoil it. Um, and I didn't want to spend too much time on it and I only had enough film to do a single reshoot as I'll explain in a bit when we get there. So this is not a real ideal one-to-one -one test. It wasn't done at box speed. The footage that you're going to see and the scans that you're going to see in this video were pushed two stops in the C41 process. That's all I'll say about that. I spoke about this a little in the first video in this series, but if you're not familiar, Harman Phoenix 200 can have a very strong purple tint or stain to the base depending on how it's developed in the C41 chemical process. When I was developing at home, I always got really clear negatives, but when Attic Darkroom did his tests and used old C41 chemicals, he got a bit of a purple tint to the base. And then a lot of labs, especially those that use dip and dunk processing, give negatives that have a really, really strong purple tint or stain. It doesn't seem to wash out whatever it is. So I speculated in that first video that it was probably down to either oxidation of the developer or accumulation of something within the developer solution as it's being reused because a lot of labs will replenish and reuse their developer rather than home use where it's more of a one, not quite one shot, but you're using it for a few rolls and then chucking it. You're not replenishing the same tank of solution for a long period of time. Maybe something was building up and that would cause the purple stain. When I set up to do work for the next video in this series and some other development videos, I made a fresh batch of C41 chemicals, as I always do for this Phoenix project especially, just to rule out any issues with aged or depleted chemicals and minimise the amount of time compensation I need to do. I was working back and forth between shooting and developing over the course of the day and my test strips were five exposures each, so I was getting four test strips per roll and I developed about the equivalent of eight rolls worth over about a five hour period. It was a very busy day. Um, so these chemicals were quite used, but they were essentially brand new. And then all of a sudden I was developing a bunch of Phoenix strips in a row and one of them came out purple. It went from zero to zero to 100, just like that. There was no ramp up. It just came on all of a sudden. And these strips were developed in a row within a window of about 15 minutes. So, you know, we're not talking about time here, just the reuse of the chemicals. In this video, I want to look at four things very broadly. What causes the purple color? Does the use of aged or seasoned developer affect your negative density? Does it affect the grain? And does that purple tint or stain to the base make Phoenix harder to scan? The three bath C41 kit from Bellini has bleach and fixer that have twice the capacity of that of the developer. So the developer can do 12 rolls of film and the bleach and fixer can do 24 rolls each. They also separately sell the developer as its own thing so that you can buy it later. Maybe you don't have to generate such a big backlog and then you're able to just get the most out of the bleach and fixer and kind of separate things over time. For my purposes, that worked wonderfully because I suspected that this was a developer issue. So I used that same used and aged bleach and fixer with fresh color developer that I made up there and then, and I repeated that test strip, but with one more caveat that makes this test even more unscientific. I've already said that all these strips were pushed, or the strips that we're gonna be looking at in this video were pushed two stops in C41. The other thing is that the strip that came out purple, I was going to have to repeat anyway because I accidentally used the time for the seventh roll with the kit for the seventh test strip I developed with that batch of chemicals. So it's overdeveloped about a stop and there is about a one stop difference in density between these test strips, but that's just something we're gonna have to live with and I still don't think it actually matters that much. Anyway, I reshot this test strip and then developed it using the correct time with, for a two stop push in the fresh C41 developer and sure enough, the base came out perfectly clear this time. This pretty much nails it down that it's the developer and the use of reused seasoned developer that causes this purple color in the base and nothing to do with bleaching or fixing or washing because those three things were the exact same using the old chems and the exact same process for both test strips. Either way, it's definitely the developer and nothing else. And as you'll see, still doesn't matter. 
Given that I'm using these chemicals well within their rated shelf life and capacity, I don't expect there would be a difference in density. And subjectively, again, I don't own a densitometer, I'm not into densitometry, it looks like they're about the same as you would expect. If we offset them by about one stop of exposure to compensate for the difference in overdevelopment with the first strip, yeah, they look about the same. These chemicals could normally be reused for other film. You know, okay, they might yield this color with the base of Phoenix, but I could still use them for other film with no problems. And sure enough, I did. I didn't throw out that old developer. I used it for some personal roles and they came out perfectly fine. Both of these test strips were to be pushed two stops, so there is plenty of grain to look at. And going back to the first video in the series, the overdevelopment of that first strip by an extra stop should result in larger, coarser grain. In the highlights, there's really not much of a difference where there is good, even exposure of both the large and small grains within the emulsion and plenty of density. The shadows are where we see the real difference with the darkest depths of the shadows between the color chart and the box being quite a bit more grainy in the left photo because in the darkest underexposed regions of the photo you're preferentially exposing the larger more sensitive grains in the emulsion and then you're developing them even more with the overdevelopment causing them to be larger. For this part of the video, do bear in mind that I DSLR scan and use Negative Lab Pro for inverting the negatives, but the overall theory should be about the same, regardless of what scanning method you personally use. Before doing anything, the difference between the two strips is really obvious. After white balancing each against its own rebate, the left strip is a lot more blue, so should come out a lot warmer and more yellow after inversion. Inverting both of them, using the inversion settings for the right image to invert the left one, yeah, it's a lot warmer. The highlights are especially orange and the shadows are quite green. Roll analysis and syncing settings are great, very powerful tools in Negative Lab Pro, but they should never be used to compare two different strips from different rolls of film. Even so, having done it deliberately wrong, I was able to get this out of that left shot in about 20 seconds of work. I deliberately only gave myself about 20 seconds to do this to prove that it could be done and remedied very quickly. Obviously, I could do it and get it pretty much perfect if I gave myself like 10 minutes. But that's kind of not the point. The point I'm trying to get across is that there is a minimal adjustment needed that can be done in a few seconds. Processing the negatives separately gave much better results, but the left image still leans quite warm and quite green. Adding some split toning and then some basic hue adjustments has things looking pretty damn close to each other in about 30 or 40 seconds. And anyway, once you dial these settings in for a given roll of Phoenix, you could just apply them to every shot on the roll with the click of a button. I am aware that we are looking at overdeveloped and underexposed images, so I tried the EI200 shots as well, and even without adjustment, they actually come out a lot closer, despite them being three and two stops overdeveloped respectively. Just a very basic white balance adjustment is all that's needed to get them to line up much, much better. To be fair, I should say that I can't tell whether this is because they're being shot at 200, the box speed, or because the huge overdevelopment relative to that level of exposure means that there's a bigger density difference between the emulsion and the base, and it's kind of suppressing it in a sort of signal to noise kind of way, but that's just something to bear in mind. So to summarize, the purple color that a lot of people are seeing with Harman Phoenix 200 comes from the use of reused or seasoned color developer. There's something either being formed or accumulating in the developer which undergoes some interaction that's quite specific to Phoenix yielding this purple color which doesn't seem to want to wash out. It's definitely nothing to do with bleaching or fixing or washing and it's nothing to do with the age of the developer itself but rather its reuse. So I believe that something is either being formed in the developer or being leached out of the previous roles into the developer which undergoes this interaction with Harman Phoenix 200. Even so, the purple base itself doesn't seem to have a major impact on scanning. It, for a Negative Lab Pro workflow and my personal setup, it did slightly increase the amount of work that I needed to put in to get good looking images, but we are talking tens of seconds once per roll. It's not a big deal. It is fair to say it had a, an impact and it did require more work to work around but I mean, if 30, 40 seconds is going to kill you, film photography probably isn't for you. And if you're not DSLR scanning, Harman did put in a ton of work prior to launch and actually prepared this PDF with all sorts of recommended scanner settings and profiles that people can use for Naritsus and Frontiers and various other setups. And given that these profiles, if you want to call them that, were derived with the help of labs, 
they would have been seeing this purple color and they would have been aware of it and designing these settings around that. So that's kind of already baked into the lab scanning settings that Harman have provided. This video was completely unplanned, as I said, and really just me talking about something that happened while I was redoing a strip that I messed up for the next actual video, which is where I'm going to spend a bit more of my time once I actually recover and get better. But I hope I've given you some peace of mind that although this is probably technically not an ideal thing because you are seeing some difference in the processing from the start of the Ken's life to the end of their life, and that might increase some complexity or introduce some difficulties for some people, maybe printing in the dark room, maybe the extra density and color in the base could be a problem for RA4. I don't know. For a scanning workflow, it's really not a problem. I think I'm going to go to bed. So stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at chaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you liked this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.